How the hell do you make these? Password. I mean, seriously, how? Well, I am clearly a firebender and harness the power of Zeus, so it's pretty easy. Whoa, now I'm... I'm me. This is embarrassing. So I'm gonna show you how I make my videos. Everything I can from filming, to script writing, to prop making, to how I make my deep fakes. I don't know how he actually did it. He won't tell me and I'm really scared of him now. And of course, some of the failures, of course you wanna see those. And I also tried my best to document the behind the scenes to these videos while I was making them. So you get to see a bit of behind the camera and just what it was like to make these videos in general. So yeah, it, it some things are pretty funny, I'd say. For example, here's a little behind the scenes to my caffeine video. Everything is covered! No! I feel so bad for now. I've taken it a step too far. It escalated too much. I had too much fun with it. I'm sorry. I think I even got it on my face. I actually pretended to sniff it. Oh no. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna show you quite a few things here. But I want to start at the start in November last year. So I had this idea for a channel called Nile Green where I would make parodies of Nile Red and hopefully really fun to make, which it is. As long as I don't get eaten by acid or something. But I had no money at the time and these videos cost a lot to make. So how did I make this? I mean, this is how my lab used to look last year. Yeah. This is all pure gas boiling. I gotta get out of here. This is the distillation. Oh my god. All of these factors just meant there was no way I could start this. So I spent some time cleaning out the shed, and for money, I signed up for a week-long medical trial where they basically give you drugs. Safe drugs for medicine. Might need to explain this a bit more, huh? <laughs> well, instead of getting a job like a normal person, I signed up to become a test subject in a week-long dementia medical trial where they basically pay you to tell them how much their new medicine hurts. Or if you like the sensation of your insides burning on fire. And this paid for my first few videos before getting monetized. So it's worth it. Now, I needed to make a deep fake voice of Nal Red so he can say some really messed up sh**. But I had no experience with coding or deep fakes at all. And trust me, I've tried to impersonate his voice and it does not go well. Actually, I think I've got his voice down a little bit more now. Hey guys. Oh fuck. Yeah. I just need to do some chemistry. I just need to bang chemicals together like that. Um, because it's really important. <laughs> this is not not right. Yeah, so you see, I really needed to learn how to deepfake his voice. I researched into it and quickly came across a deepfake service. Now, unfortunately, I've been advised not to share this service, and if I did, it would affect both the company and some people as well. There's actually so many out there, it's really not that hard to find some. So instead, I've been researching other text-to-speech AIs that don't involve a company that I can talk about and will show later in this video. Now, I want to delve into how I make my videos so chaotic because I think that's a big part of that. Torture time. As I'm sure it comes to no surprise, I may have been a little chaotic at times. It's not that exciting. <laughs> I think this explains a lot. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Now I know all of this looks crazy, but I actually know exactly what I'm doing because I've had so much experience testing the boundaries of things. And that's why I've never hurt myself doing these experiments, despite doing them horribly. All right, now that my camera is balancing on my knee, it's so sketchy back then. Place this back in. Oh, slipping. Awesome. <laughs> Most people I know haven't actually seen these clips because it's just hard to explain what I'm doing and also just why I'm doing them exactly. <laughs> so styrofoam is made of, and I know it worries people a lot, Plus, I do things a lot safer now anyway. I do a lot of research beforehand to safely do these stunts. So I really understand the physics and methods of how to handle things like fire. Do not repeat anything dangerous you see in these videos. I also just have a lot of experience doing stunts with fire. You hide yourself underneath so that I am protected from the flames above. And I mean like, a lot? Whoops. Okay, so maybe that explains why I'm so comfortable with fire in my videos. Fortunately, I got bored of setting myself on fire and got into amateur chemistry, which is why I know some chemistry knowledge. But as I grew older, experiments kept getting more complicated and dangerous, but because I couldn't afford basic safety equipment, I had to do things a different way. I didn't have a retort stand, so I taped my glassware <laughs> to the ceiling. And they weren't always the safest way. Rocks and a paint can to hold this thing together. So this is the distillation. Oh my god. <laughs> As you can see, my reactants make- See, my, no, no, see, I can't explain how I knocked it over my foot. Um, 
You're just gonna have to accept that. I think this is how Nile Green was born, to be honest. So I think that explains the chaotic chemistry side of things. And it's hard to imagine, but I'm actually safer at setting myself on fire now. That's a weird sentence to say. Now obviously don't repeat this, as this can be dangerous if done incorrectly. And I have a lot of experience with this, but to set myself on fire in my videos, I now wear two gloves, both filled with water, to protect my hand from the gasoline I pour onto it. Okay, but seriously though, for those asking me what my education was like, it was obviously a lot more than just me being a lunatic with fire. I was heavily inspired by Cody's lab, and I just wanted to try and repeat everything that he and every other science YouTuber out there did. From Nerd Rage, Electro Boom, Smarter Every Day, obviously Now Red, William Osman and the Backyard Scientist. I forgot to list you, Mark. Sorry. It's okay, don't cry. <laughs> so shout out to all of these YouTubers for showing me how to do this stuff, and my awesome parents for allowing me to blow up their backyard on the daily. Uh... But I think all of this explains why my videos can be so chaotic. Out of all my parodies, though, this clip was the most scary and chaotic one. It's gonna go everywhere. I'm gonna hate this. Good. That was a lot more than I expected. I just set fire to a tree, well, a fake tree, and used a fire extinguisher for the first time. Ooh, sparkly. Um, I should not do that again. That was more than I anticipated for. It's like a crime scene. Yeah, so that scared me a bit. Hope people don't get too concerned. That's all right, I'm fine. Now you may have noticed, I couldn't say anything there. And that goes for all of my videos. I have to film in complete silence so that my real voice doesn't come through. It's a really weird experience having all this chaos, things are on fire, things are blowing up, and I'm not allowed to make a sound. And then just being like behind the camera, just like, gotta get the frame right. Yep, just gotta mix around a bit more. <laughs> oh. oh shit, what did I do that for? That has gasoline in it. Well, let me get rid of the gasoline. So for the timing to be right in my videos, I have to say things in my head, like imagine it as things are on fire, like my hand. <laughs> and then sync up my hand gestures later in editing. <laughs> like, it, uh. <laughs> This is just how I do some editing magic. And this is the result. Oh my, these molecules are tight. This is hard. Oh man, my potential wine left me. Okay, that's cool. But I think this scene really shows what it's like behind camera. A wig covered in paraffin oil. It's not, um, there's no way I'm putting gasoline on this thing. I am very scared for this actually. It didn't do anything. I guess I'll get an acetone white. I didn't want to have to do this. I'm gonna do it outside. Turn me into Jesus. Uh, I guess I have long hair now. Oh no, my beautiful Jesus hair. It singes my eyeball. Ah! I'm gonna have to stop that. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop that. I didn't realize till later, but this actually singed my hair a bit. Did burn a hole down there? and almost melted my tripod. I think that was a good shot too. Ugh, that was gross. I've now started the air exhaust. Could be better. I don't want to do that again though. Now you may have noticed from that clip that it's pretty messy around the place. I just don't have much room to film this stuff. <laughs> that happens so often. I can touch the ceiling. And so I was really limited by what kind of messes I could make. Like for the Nar Red Goes Too Far video, that was my first time making Piranha Solution, and it went everywhere. After neutralizing it and diluting it with a bunch of water in my own homemade fume hood, I had to pour it all over the ground. And so I've made a behind the scenes on this that kind of shows how messy it can get. Oh, it just splashed up at me. How do I get this out? Super fast. I eventually got it out and used it to remove the mess. This was a disaster, but... I mean, I kind of expected it. Okay, okay. So, so I walked into the shed this morning to finish, like, to redo one of the first scenes in the hot dog video, the winner video. Ew. Yeah, I came in. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to clean up the cornstarch. I forgot about that. But look at the cornstarch. It is all just dissolved. This used to be a lump of cornstarch. Now it's just like a, a whitish brick. And, and now it's made my cleaning easier. <laughs> I can't 
believe that. So the editing for the explosion in this video was actually quite interesting. First I tested if I can make a little water explosion with an air cannon. Holy shit. Then I covered a hammer and some paper, and this is so that it blends in with the background. How? Then I cut a hole in the wall with a black backdrop behind it, then let it naturally drop like that, and then I go like, oh no, that's my Pokemon card collection, whatever. And then all of it together with some editing looks like this. It is dangerous. Wow. Oh. That's just my Pokemon card collection. With all of this mess though, there was no way I was gonna keep going like this. Oh, that's not a fly, that's a liquid. I don't know what liquid it is. So I had to come up with a solution. So I decided to buy a really horrible shed and put it together with my dad and siblings, and I placed a table in it, and I made all of my mess in there away from all of my other stuff. This shed basically became the smashing zone. It's honestly one of the best investments I've made on this channel, purely because I get to smash random shit in it. There, all clean. And it's also a lot easier for me to clean up afterwards. I usually just listen to some music, and I can easily just flip the table if I want to clean it that way. So you may have noticed, I like to use some visual effects in my videos that make your brain go, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but behind the scenes, it's a lot more simpler. It's actually kind of silly behind the scenes, to be honest. Just me pushing the present around. I just gotta remove myself after the fact. It takes a bit of effort, but it's on a tripod, so it's pretty easy. And it does take a few attempts for me to actually get something that I'm happy with as well. As you can see here, I'm just running up and down a bunch until I get it. And I wanted a point of view shot of the present, so I got myself a skateboard. <laughs> that's how I got that shot. Can't say Derifto. Oh my god, it's gonna die. Now, you may be wondering how I handle most chemicals. Well, I didn't want to die, so I made this homemade fume hood a while back, and the extraction fan for it was generously given to me from a subscriber on my old channel that I unfortunately had to delete a while back. And somehow some of you recognized me from that channel from just owning a Duran flask. How? Putting this together was quite difficult as I haven't made anything like this before, so this was a project that took months. In fact, I didn't even have a sash or properly fitted exhaust for it until a few weeks ago. And now it sits nicely in my upgraded shed lab kitchen thing. I bought this kitchen and put it together while working on the elephant toothpaste video. Quite a big difference to how the shed used to look, but now I can at least use this space for some more serious chemistry. <laughs> Look at the shiny little beads. In order to clean this space though, I had to move everything into the smashing shed. And well, <laughs> it stayed like this for about a month. I was really worried that the place would like spontaneously combust. Now this obviously doesn't stop chemicals from being dangerous in my videos. I mean, I could just throw hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid, but that would be a very bad idea. Luckily, most chemicals look either clear or white, so it's not difficult to replace them with water and flour. And this may be surprising, but I don't actually purposely break glass in my videos, except for that one time I filled an egg with cement. Dangerous. So don't follow what you see in this video. It is for entertainment and educational purposes only. The glassware I use in my videos is supplied by Science Supply. I've been using that glassware for a while now, and apparently been smashing it for a while too. But if you are looking for quality glassware in Australia, I highly recommend Science Supply. How did you come up with the concept of human centrifuge? Well, I rewatched the footage, and I'm still not entirely sure, but I think it might have something to do with when I first made this spinning square. Oh my god, I've wanted to do this since I was like a child. You see, a while ago, I became kind of obsessed with liquid parabolas, because I thought they looked really cool. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, look at the fluid there, that's awesome. I don't have footage of it, but I remember jumping on it and spinning myself a few times for fun. So I think the idea probably came from that. That was fun. I think out of all the behind the scenes though, my favorite has to be the one where the box is disappearing for the Mark Rober nuke video. The second attempt decomposed. And the third attempt we found the formula. It just looks so silly behind the scenes, I love it. You see that I get a lot of people confused with how I make my videos. For example, for some reason, a lot of people think the Mark Rober body is AI generated too or even the videos themselves. It's actually me underneath with his AI generated face over top while I'm wearing his merch. Whoa, I'm back. Time to make another nuke. Whoa, now I'm now green. All right, let's make some caffeine. This this merch actually costs quite a bit. And now I'm storing it in with the fucking blowtorch. Oh Jesus. The reason that's so expensive is because Nared's lab coat right here. <laughs> I went searching everywhere for this thing. I actually used the money from the Nared's Christmas video to buy this. A bit of a sacrifice to make the video look real, but hey, 
it's an actual legitimate lab coat. So I'll definitely be using it for actual chemistry in the future. So while it's not merch, it is a legitimate lab coat. <laughs> also, a lot of people just tell me I should make him thicker. Like he's too skinny, change it. Like, I don't know guys, last time I checked, I can't just change the thickness of my arm. Oh wow, there's a weight, body weight adjust. So that's why Mark Robot in my videos is skinny. Some of you were also saying the heads look too big, but I don't know what you're talking about. It looks fine. So you're probably wondering how I make the deep fake voice. You cheater. I'm telling God. You can't tell God. If Making it sound realistic is difficult, and that's because people's voices are not text. Just let that sink in for what we're trying to do here. Believe me, if I had to pee, I'd take a pee on this field. Right here. I hate it. The problem with text to speech is that we don't say every word the exact same way every time, but we do write it the exact same way every time. Just like reading a book, everyone's going to read it differently with different emotion, and that's no different to an AI. So I searched for voice-to-voice -voice AIs to see if they exist, and turns out they do, but unfortunately, they're a lot harder to gain access to. What? They're usually made by companies profiting off of them by selling their use to Hollywood. You see, it gets worse though, because this is the standard. If you want to make your own AI voice, which is in special projects, you have to contact them to find the price. I don't want to imagine what kind of price this is. <laughs> so I delved into a bunch of research papers and GitHub projects that were making something similar and tried my best to understand their research, but I struggled a lot. Dilated and depthwise separable converse, con, con, convolutional residual block. Of course. <laughs> Of course, why didn't I think of that? My plan was to follow their method, but change the input voices they used to my own. I then downloaded their project files and the Anaconda coding environment. Whoa. I was gonna give this a shot. So this ended up not working because I don't know how to code. <laughs> I then luckily found a video made by a YouTuber called ByCloud showing a free AI voice generator called TalkNet, which allows for an audio input to use as a guide for the text-to-speech. So while it's not quite what I was looking for because it is a text-to-speech, blah 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 blah. <laughs> it cuts off halfway. It can be pretty useful. And after testing it for a bit, Kevin, 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 Kevin. <laughs> You have to play around with it a bit. So to make the deepfake voice using TalkNet, I cut an audio file 20 minutes of length of Nile Red talking into hundreds of separate files and made a transcript file with every word he said within it. This is done manually for best results, but because it's thousands of words, I preferred getting a computer to do this for me as I have a life. I then followed all the tutorials and ended up with this result. Hello, this is a test of Nile Green. Oh my God, this is demonic. It's your boy Nile Green here. I got bored feeding liners to my acid. Whoa, it looks extra hungry this time. But anyway, I decided to extract some caffeine. I got bored feeding wieners to my acid. Whoa, it looks extra hungry this time. Now you can probably tell it is worse than the Nile Red voice that I use in my videos, which by the way was also made as a test. And I wouldn't be surprised if you could get better results using this AI than the AI voices I've used in my videos. So I like to view this technology like a knife. I could either use it to cut my vegetables with, or much worse. It's how you use the tool that matters, and that's why none of this is illegal despite the potential for unethical use. Sounds like I'm about to go, go for a rep there, doesn't it? <laughs> so if you're going to use this, be mindful and careful with it. Because even with the best intentions, deepfakes can still be dangerous territory to mess with. If you want to try talking it yourself, I've put ByCloud's video link in the description. Oh, and just a tip, there is some skill to this. Really understanding what kind of audio to use in the data set is really important. That's something I paid a lot of attention to for my Mark Rober AI voice. I went through all of his videos and only picked out parts where he spoke in a very specific way. You can even hear me whisper, which is creepy. I believe it helps the text of speech to sound more consistent. I assume too much variability and it's more likely to get things mixed up, too little, and it's gonna sound more robotic and lifeless. Now, Tarkotron. It does better text-to-speech than TalkNet, but it doesn't have the option for singing. Yeah, if you sing in the reference order for TalkNet, it can sing for you. It's only good if you get your target voice to sing as well, but I tried it with Nile Red anyway, because I wanted to see what it would sound like. Her finger and her thumb and the shape of an L on her forehead. Eh, you can kind of hear it trying to sing. Hey now, you're an all-star, oh get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. It's really not that great. So now the Mark Rober deepfake. That was actually my first ever deepfake and my first time properly using AI. So this required a lot of research and tutorials. For the deepfake, I needed to look similar to Mark. So I had to be a bit creative here and went researching for what cap Mark Rober wears. It was out of stock everywhere. So I found a similar cap and bought it. 
Now, I don't want to be responsible for an army of deep-faked Mark Rovers running around the internet. So I'm going to keep the process short. I mean, this is such a boring process, I'm just putting it up on screen right now. You can read it if you're interested in the process, but generally, I spend around a week preparing 8,000 images or so of the subject's face, and I manually go through them all discarding the bad ones. This takes four to five hours. So it's 1,450 images that I went through in 45 minutes. So I've divided that by 45, that's 32 images per minute. That'll give me 310 minutes divided by 60 to get into hours. That's around five hours to get through all of these images manually. And I'm probably doing it multiple times anyway, because I'm gonna go through the sorting method first. 32% of the images I went through was garbage. That's why we removed the bad ones. And then I draw nearly 100 masks to train. Gotta draw around his face, just like this. I reached the end, 76 labeled. And once I'm happy, I prepare a video of myself looking around saying random stuff and the facial expressions for it to train with. But anyway, I'm now green again, once again. This time, I'm bald. I now finally get to train it, which takes around 20 to 60 hours. For the full process, I've included links in the description that I've learned from. Your editing skills are unmatched. I wonder how the editing process was. Okay, well I'm happy to show you my secrets. First thing I do is I swing you around over here. So if you want to know how I make my videos so good, first thing I do is I turn off the light, go to sleep, and then start editing. So yeah, that's my amazing editing setup in case you were wondering. Except I used to have this monitor um, attached to the desk here and it would go right in front of my face like here. And I'd just be like editing like all day just up here. <laughs> <laughs> now for those asking, I first started this process with an RX 580 GPU with 8GB of VRAM, but this struggled to get me over 200,000 iterations and my computer kept crashing. So I then spent $1,000 on an RTX 3060 with 12GB of VRAM and had to upgrade both my fan cooling and my RAM up from 16GB up to 32GB, all just in order to continue deep faking for this channel. What the? Come to think of it, I... I spent all that money and did all that before I even knew if the deepfake would work. <laughs> I remember how risky that was now. Or just if anything in my process would even work. It was all very theoretical. And it works pretty good now. My my PC's... <laughs> well... <laughs> the, the art on my PC is, it says otherwise. <laughs> Now my first test doing this didn't look so great because I didn't have Mark Rober merch at the time and I had long hair. Even though I don't even know if it's gonna work, it's still fun. That's what matters. So while I didn't really want to say goodbye to my long hair, I kind of had to in order for the deepfake to work, so I got a cut. Now apparently my deepfake was too good because some people were getting confused. And I eventually removed the videos because I didn't want to ruin the reputation of anyone. I kind of learned it the hard way that even with the best intentions and disclaimers, deepfakes can still be very difficult territory to mess with. So if you're going to try anything I've shown in this video, just be very careful and mindful with it. Now, making Mark Rober's AI face was a walk in the park compared to making Nile Red's AI face. I was quite worried that it wouldn't even work. First of all, he has hair. That is known to be a problem with deepfakes. And second, he wears glasses. Those were two very big challenges for me to get over. Yeah, so for the deepfake to work, I need to make sure that his hair is all very well clear and defined. So I've selected clips and parts of his videos where his hair does not change. This one I might not use, it's a little bit going down right there. Look at his right arm and his facial expression as I go through these. Look at his arm and facial expression, man. He's totally a robot. You see, my options are either to use Nile Red's head or face, but if I use his face, then my hair wouldn't match his hair, and if I used his head, then my hair would poke out anyway. This can only work if our hairstyles are similar. So I went to a hair salon and showed them this picture of Nigel to see if I could get his hairstyle for the deepfake. But with my hair naturally just being floofy like this and his like this, they said it just wasn't possible. So I just got it trimmed a lot. I knew this wouldn't be good enough though, so my solution was to buy a bold cap online to prevent my hair from poking through. I didn't have many high hopes for this, but fortunately, it actually worked. But if that's the 2.0, and mine is the 1.0, how did you know I was making this? My next problem, though, was his glasses. I couldn't find any good examples online of people deepfaking with glasses. They usually just end up merging into the person's face and looking really weird. But I found people claiming that it works if you have both the target face and the subject's face both wearing glasses. Now, I could have gone with some cheap $2 glasses from the store, but if I was going to do this, 
I was going to do it right. I basically need Nara Red's glasses for this defect to work. So I've got this image of him. It's super clear. Like, it's great. Zone in on those glasses. So I spent around six hours analyzing Nara Red's glasses and researching all of Ray-Ban's models. My goal was to get as close as possible to his glasses for the deepfake. I eventually bought these glasses for a couple hundred dollars, and they're not the same as his. His is a little thinner, but I'm pretty happy with them. Glasses that I don't even need. I actually love these. I don't even have visual impairment, and yet I'm looking after them like they're the most delicate things. I can't find where I put the lenses, but I can transform these glasses into sunglasses if I wanted to, so that's pretty cool. I tested the deepfake first with some really cheap blue glasses, and it started off really bad because I was testing some new settings. I turned off the settings that was making Nigel bold, and bold Nigel slowly started disappearing. But just as I feared, the blue glasses underneath would jut themselves out as I turned my head. This is one reason why I wanted my glasses to look as similar as possible to his, so that when they jut out like this, they can kind of blend in if you're not looking too closely. Now, I've shown you that I'm the actor with their deepfaked face, but how do I talk with their voice too? I honestly have no idea where that went. Especially considering that I use a text-to-speech instead of a voice-to-voice -voice converter. That would be very helpful if I had one. <laughs> While going into this, I knew it was going to be difficult, but basically my idea was that if I generated their AI voice to the script first, and then filmed myself lip-syncing to their voice while acting them out at the same time... I only want to revenge. Mark, are you okay? I only want to revenge because you hit me with a train and beat my record. I only hit you with a train because you bought me for slavery and locked me in your basement for four years to illegally manufacture military weaponry for your two videos. Then I should be able to just mute myself from the original video and replace it with their voice because I've lip synced myself to it. And as you can imagine, there were many attempts and failures while doing this. My plan is to use a dance. My plan is to use a dance. It takes many, many attempts for me to be happy with this because I need both the lip syncing and the acting to all be in sync while being engaging for the video. My plan is to use a dam to separate the two reactants. Then we explode the dam and they both mix to create the world's largest elephant toothpaste explosion. I think I'm gonna leave it there, that was pretty good. And I always did this with this keyboard in my hand so I could control and replay the voice to lip sync myself to it over and over again until it was like perfect. <laughs> It was very difficult for me to hide this giant keyboard, so sometimes I would hold it in one hand, just slightly out of shot. Or sometimes I'd have to like press play and then quickly get into action, and then do my scene and then be like, oh, oh, no, that wasn't good enough, I, I missed a word. And then I have to go back, press play, go back, whatever, come back, do it again, and oh, whoops, I forgot again. <laughs> just do that so many times till I get it right. It is not easy to lip sync, especially with an AI voice that doesn't talk naturally. Oh, and how I got their backgrounds. I basically just Photoshop them out of it and then can put myself into it. This takes quite a while because I need different images where they're like showing different parts of the background behind them. And then I can use Photoshop to like put that over top of them. And it can be a little bit difficult to find scenes and shots where they're not in the center of like the shot. So I kind of had to make a little bit of the background not real. For me to use these backgrounds though, I needed to green screen myself into them. However, I didn't have a good green screen at the time, so I bought this professional green screen and set it up in my room. My elephant toothpaste video was very difficult because the script required me to green screen some elephant toothpaste shots as well as make some messes, and I didn't want to do that in this room. It would like stain everything if I did, and I don't have the space for most of the shots anyway. So I bought a vinyl green screen, cleaned up our veranda outside, put down some Ikea tiling, and then installed it there. This took over a week to do, purely just because drilling into bricks is so slow. So if you're wondering why my videos take forever, that's that's one of the reasons. Oh, and that clip that you just saw, by the way, is how I made the elephant toothpaste in Golf Him. I just used two different elephant toothpaste reactions aligned some distance apart to give the size difference. And after some editing, I ended up with this. And I'm, I'm very happy with the green screen because it was very good. It's made out of vinyl, so I can just pour whatever liquids onto it. As long as it's just water, actually, not any liquid. Great, I need to clean everything up. Only downside, though, is being outside. Which meant to control my lighting. That's a lot of light. And you do need to control your lighting pretty well for the defect to work. So I had to film most of that video at night. This is my, uh... So th these lights are, just, are to light up the background. The green screen right here. 
And then I have these two lights over here, which is just for lighting up me, which will be on this chair. And then the camera goes in that hole. Sometimes filming till 3am and editing till 9am. Hello, it's 3.45am. When everyone's asleep inside and I have to be really quiet. I have to pack all this up now and I don't know how I'm gonna do that. And it's like four in the morning and my parents are asleep over there. What do I do? <laughs> There's people having a motorbike race or something. So I basically became a night owl for the video. <laughs> it, it had to be done. Now for the null red background, I noticed that he interacts with his table a lot with his hands and stuff. So I bought this acacia wood bench that looks similar enough to his table. And I just put that on top of a movable desk, which is, which is this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna move it right now. It's on trolleys. It's actually not a movable desk. It's actually just on a bunch of moving trolleys. It just makes me become more part of the set so it doesn't look like I've just got this Photoshop background behind me. I'm, I'm in my room. Yeah. Now Mark also interacts with his table, but I was a bit lazy with that and so I just got a white table. Ow. Um, I just laid on it. It would have been easier if it was green so I could just green screen it out. But since it was white, that just means I had to fix it in post, which took forever. Now the latter scene in that video was probably one of the hardest. It was the most sketchy thing I had to film, as I don't have a ladder that just goes into space. So I tried all sorts of things to get this to work. I had this idea in my mind, and I didn't know how to do it, so I just tried all sorts of things. <laughs> and a lot of them were very silly. <laughs> Eventually I somehow got it to work though, and then I was even able to extend the ladder in editing up to space. That was, that was pretty, like I was, I was pretty happy with that. Now with all the mayhem on this channel, there's no way I could have done all this on my own. Just getting all of your supportive comments and the feedback I've gotten from people has been super helpful. And this of course includes the people who have helped me in the videos, such as my brothers helping me out, one of them just dragging me through the door. I mean, it's still helping, right? Or one of my friends agreeing to hike out with me to a cliff in the middle of nowhere to film me kicking a Christmas tree off a cliff. And also friends coming up with some interesting poll ideas or some interesting ideas for the videos themselves. You get a diamond. It's also been really fun being able to talk to Mark Rober and Narred about this channel, and they've both been really nice people. And you can't forget the explosions and fire collab where he pretends to hit me with a baseball bat. What are you- <laughs> That was pretty fun. And also massive thanks to Science Supply for supplying the glassware for my videos, even though they know that I break a lot of them. I had that in my brain that that would happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video where I showed you the behind the scenes of everything. It was a lot, I know. And that's all for this video. See ya.